Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about uh, a lawsuit that Nintendo won. And this is kind of a big one because we've been following the Switch hacking scene now uh, for years about the successes, Nintendo combating them, uh, and something they did uh, kind of towards the end of last year is file a lawsuit uh, against Team Executor. You guys might recognize them because they're the ones that discovered the flaw in the Switch about uh, the two pins uh, that you can kind of, uh, it, it, in all models up through, I believe, it's every launch switch all the way through the switch revision, I think was susceptible to this, where you could cross the two pins to get to the, basically, underneath the layer of the OS, uh, and then, you know, load in your bootloaders and your homebrew and everything else, and that leads to a billion different things that you can do. Now, uh, I saw, saw this on GameIndustry.biz, but they're not actually the source for this because Torrent Freak uh, are the ones that actually got a hold of the literal injunction. Um, but uh, we get some basic information. Uh, Nintendo Switch uh, wins an injunction against the sellers of the Switch mod, pirated games, etc. So Team Executor was doing more than just selling a tool uh, that allowed you to basically hack your Switch. Uh, it, it went much deeper deeper than that. Um, this person named Moreno was accused of selling Nintendo Switch mod devices, uh, by the hacking group Team Executor. Now, they don't know if they're part of Team Executor, but it's someone who was selling Team Executor stuff, so chances are this was probably one of the main members of Team Executor. Um, the mod was announced in early 2018 with the claim it made it possible to load pirated games onto Switch, which it did. Um, Moreno alleg allegedly sold these alongside SD cards that contained pirated, ga pirated games to be loaded onto consoles via the mod. And this is a big legal no-no. Can't sell pirated games. Um, you're not even supposed to distribute pirated games, even for free, let alone sell them. Um, as well as modded NES Classic editions with over 800 games. Again, you can mod your own NES Classic all you want, load as many games as you want, you can't sell it. Um, so, uh... The good news, I guess, for Moreno is that there is no uh, fine. Nintendo did not seek a fine. They're not going after a fine. Uh, but he lost. So let's get into uh, the original report here by Torn Freak. Uh, this came out on January 2nd. And we're just going to go through uh, what they have reported here. Uh, so you guys have the full facts of the situation. In 2018, Nintendo filed a lawsuit against a California man accused of selling pirated Nintendo games, modding devices, and modding services. As part of a stipulated judgment, a California court has now handed down a permanent injunction restraining the man from circumventing Nintendo's technical measures or offering any unauthorized copies of Nintendo copyright works. Uh, in January 2018, hacking group Team Executor announced a Nintendo Switch hack that presented the opportunity for people to run pirated games on the console. This type of exploit is nothing new for hardware manufacturers like Nintendo, but given its aggressive stance towards intellectual property rights, the company wasn't likely to sit back and watch the development distribution followed. Indeed, during December 2018, Nintendo took legal action against a Californian resident alleged to have sold Nintendo Switch mod devices produced by Team Executor. Memory cards containing pirated copies of Nintendo titles, plus a modified version of NES Classic with 800 pirated games. The main defendant in the case, initially identified as Mikel Yuskadunanak, I'm sure I butchered that, uh, by Nintendo, was later named Sergio Maharo Moreno. In September 2019, there were signs that the parties had agreed to settle the case, and on December 30th, 2019, that agreement was detailed by a California court. Stating that Nintendo is a world-famous video game brand whose status is underpinned by substantial investment in intellectual property, the consent, judgment, and injunction begins with the main defendant, um, does one through ten, um, I guess there was other things that were, that were dismissed in the case, agreeing that Nintendo's copyrights and trademarks are valid and enforceable in all respects, while acknowledging that the company's technical protection measures are valid. The judgment then goes to restrain the defendant and anyone acting in concert with him from circumventing, offering services, and or offering technologies, devices, or components that circumvent Nintendo's technical protection measures. Basically, they are saying that you cannot sell anything that allows you to hack your Switch. Uh, specifically in the case to add um, ROMs, but uh, the bottom line is that any hack to Switch um, is get, opens up that potential. So basically, that little that little tool that you could insert into the side of your Switch quite easily to like um, to basically uh, you know the, the the whole crossing the pin thing. 
I'm for, I, for some reason, the exact term of it is escaping my mind. Uh, but yeah, the, the way that the method that they, the team executor created is basically now illegal and can't be sold anyways. You could still obviously do it on your own if you want, but they can't sell you a tool to do it anymore. Um, anyways, uh, it says here, uh, let me see. Uh, Moreno is also restrained from selling, renting, or offering or distributing unauthorized copies of Nintendo copyrighted works. That's not surprising. Everyone is actually um, prohibited from that. But, you know, this person, for some reason, thought it'd be cool to sell ROMs. So, um, infringing his trademarks is using the internet or any digital network to provide services to the public that enable copyright infringement of Nintendo's works. Basically, this specific person can't make videos, can't... Uh, really do anything to talk about hacking switch they can't go on forums they can't they can't use the internet in any way to help people hack their switch and help them get roms uh technically it is not against the law in general for you to make a video about how to hack your switch or how to do this there's actually nothing illegal about that but this particular person because of the additional things they were doing besides explaining how to do it uh cannot explain it cannot engage in it uh, so Moreno is, is, is being basically forced out of the Switch hacking community, or maybe even hacking in general. I'm not sure how broad this goes, if it only applies to Nintendo. Um, the, con uh, the consent judgment requires the defendant to refrain from several types of additional contact, such as challenging the validity or enforceability of any Nintendo intellectual property right or technological protection method in any form in the future. Um, hacking, modifying, or circumventing Nintendo's technical measures or reverse engineering any computer program or software developed by Nintendo or its affiliates. Basically, uh, whether it's now or a future Nintendo system, this guy cannot touch Nintendo stuff, period. Uh, and you would be, why would Moreno agree to this when it's not illegal to hack things? Um, there's no fines. The, the obvious agreement here, or, or the way Nintendo views it as, this person is like the center point of Team Executor, and they want to make sure that this center point that figured everything out doesn't touch our stuff again, ever. Um, and instead of just heavily finding him to all hell, they think just stopping this one individual will prevent it from basically happening. I mean, there's other people that will figure out ways to hack the Switch, but it's, it's definitely uh, kind of nice of Nintendo, I suppose, because they could have hit him with massive fines especially for selling intellectual property. Like, God, they could have got millions out of him. Um, they would have never saw that money because he probably doesn't have it. But uh, I think that was probably why Moreno was like, yeah, okay, I'll agree to never do this again because, hey, the alternative is my bank account's always empty. Um, let me see. The consent judgment requires the defender. Okay, yep, we already talked about that a little bit. Uh, the defendant is further required to provide written certification in Nintendo that no circumvention software or devices, including but not limited to an SX Pro, a Trinket M0 chips, and or illegal copies of games were in his or his agent's possessions. That means anyone who works for him. Um, at the date of the stipulated judgment and injunction, if they were, they have to be destroyed. So basically, they're not allowed to have anything on them anymore that allows them to pirate games um, or hack the Switch. And if they do, they need to destroy all that stuff. And they need to turn it over, you know, basically to get destroyed. Entering judgment in favor of Nintendo on each and every claim for relief in its amended complaint, the court ordered that the parties to bear their own cost of attorney fees while standing to buy to enforce the terms of the order in the event there's any future dispute. So basically Moreno has to pay his own lawyer fees, Nintendo has to pay their own lawyer fees, uh, but Nintendo overall won the case. And then uh, there is a link right here at the bottom to, uh, to this, which is the actual um, injunction... Um, and I've been through it uh, to kind of confirm everything. It's it's a lot more legalese. Um, but basically, Nintendo dominated uh, this case. So what does this mean for the Switch hacking community? Well, the thing is, the Switch has already been hacked. You can already pirate games on it. Anything, at least up until the uh, revised Switch. And even the revised Switch, I'm sure, has either been hacked or will be hacked soon because that's just the way it goes. Um, hackers always, always find a way. Um, and... and all companies like Nintendo, you know, Sony, Microsoft can do is, one, make it harder to hack your systems, um, make it harder for the games to be pirated. That, that is something they can do. Uh, and they can just scare away people when they do find out who are the ones doing the hacking and who are the ones doing all the pirating and stuff. All they can do is scare them, and hopefully that scares future people from trying to do it again. Now, they didn't scare this time with heavy fines, 
which they have done in the past with things like flashcards and stuff. They have done heavy fines. Clearly, that hasn't worked. Nintendo's done the fine route. You know, they they went after um, a ROM site that was distributing ROMs and, and fined them heavily. Uh, and that scared some ROM sites, but it hasn't stopped ROMs from being sold or shared or hacked into things and resold on the internet. So, uh, clearly that the, all the fines did is just move, move around how people are distributing ROMs. Uh, so I think that Nintendo, instead of scaring people with fines, wants to say, Hey, uh, we just don't want this happening. So we're just going to go after the, the specific people that are doing it uh, and trying to put a stop to it. So we'll see what happens. Um, Nintendo's tried a lot of other patches and stuff to stop hacking, but I guess a good way to just kind of, I guess, scare some people is be like, hey, we are going to take legal action. Um, we're just going to shut down the people that are uh, making hacking at a hardware level and making ROM distribution of Switch games to hacked Switches uh, much more difficult to do. Obviously, they can't stop it. Um, I foolishly made a video that blew up back in 2018 um, talking about how, oh, Nintendo's finally stopped Switch hacking. They, they can't stop it. Uh, they temporarily made it more difficult. Um, it's obviously been made more difficult with the revised Switch, but eventually people will be around that if they're not already. So uh, as for my general thoughts on all of this, um, I think Nintendo uh, has, is doing the right thing um, because the fines haven't really worked. Uh, so it is illegal, and it's interesting that they, they got them not just for the software distribution because that's easy. I mean, the moment you're selling ROMs, I mean, come on. Yeah, you got to be pretty stupid to be selling ROMs, but uh, that's what this person was doing. Um, but the fact that they were able to rope in protections over hacking the actual platform, uh, that was surprising because it's not illegal to mod and hack your own platform on an individual level, but um, for him to sell tools even, like you can't even sell a tool to do it. Uh, that, I thought, was a very interesting part of this lawsuit. Uh, so good for Nintendo. Uh, it's going to make, um, you know, you'll still be able to find tools to do it. There'll be other people making it. Um, there already are other people that make them. But, uh, hey, you know, it, it, it's just Nintendo more worried about the future than right now. As I said, like, he can't do things in the future. And if, you know, they are some of, you know, this person's been hacking stuff for a while, that could make it take longer and longer to jailbreak and get into um, future Nintendo platforms. So, uh yeah, Nintendo's just protecting themselves. Good on you. Anyways, here's let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Did Nintendo do enough? Did they not hit them hard enough? Uh, should he, they have not, not done anything? Should they maybe hire the person to to, uh, to maybe uh, security check Nintendo's platforms? Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I know there's a, a very diverse fan base on this where some people love the hacking community, some people hate the hacking community. And uh, I like both sides of the equation, so... I'm like a massive fence sitter on this issue, so I'm sorry. I never please anyone. All right, anyways, I am Nate Jans. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this video today on this lovely Sunday, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Actually, you know what? Before I leave, why don't you drop a like and subscribe for more content? Let's do it. Let's make 2020 the year of Nate Jans. The year of me? That sounds a little cocky, doesn't it? Neil? Let's just make it the year of video games. Huh? Let's just celebrate gaming this year. All right, catch you later.